The Nine Years Podcast is brought to you in association with Freddie Flaxman. All right, everybody, and welcome to episode 295 of the Nine Years Podcast. I am Nick Draper. I am joined, as always, by the face of BBC Sport website, Mr. Stuart Deakins. Stu, we have turned up late. Still standing great. Yeah, this is weird, isn't it? Mm. We're recording this on Saturday morning, which is different. Um, but uh, we do apologise for the late running of the show this week. But thank you very much for downloading the show. And uh, it's just going to be... All your usual stuff and nonsense, just with added extra nonsense, because we're very tired, because it's, as we say, Saturday morning, and it's a little bit different. But yeah, we're going to be talking about the defeat to Barrow and looking ahead to today's game with Stockport County, depending on when you're actually going to listen to this. Probably is all done and dusted by the time you hear this, but hey, there you go. And we're also going to be talking about transfer deadline day, as well as our usual features. In fact, Stu, should we start with transfer deadline day? Yeah, because we, we made a signing in Riley Towler, which yep. is a name that is going to take some remembering to make sure we get it right. It's, a, it's an unusual name hmm. for what seems to be an unusual personality, <laughs> judging yeah. by some of his uh, interviews he's conducted with Bristol City. But what we know is he's, he's on loan from Bristol City for the season, but there is a recall option in January. 20-year-old left-footed defender he can also play in midfield he was on loan in the national league last season with grimsby town for a very short smell smell <laughs> My, well, it's all the fish <laughs> probably that as well <laughs> yeah um, for a very short spell and um yeah i mean what do you read into this there's lots we can possibly read into this signing one it's potentially not a position we thought we were looking at getting in i think most people were looking at perhaps some cover at right wing back potentially yep. another striker we've got another center half by the looks of it and someone i don't know is, is he going to give us a bit more pace is that what we're looking for pace in the back three is that what we're missing yeah i think so um for the sort of limited sort of um stuff you can read about him he looks like he's good on the ball as well so he can pass uh, you know it's really important that position especially in, in the centre back we need someone to come be able to come out with the ball, step out with the ball. Um I don't think um I don't think Pierce and Brown and even Nightingale to be fair, that's their strength. Um they can pass the ball, but I don't, you know, you if you if you go back to the days of Terrell Thomas, Terrell used to be quite comfortable coming out with the ball and and sort of you sort of need that in a way so they don't, you know, you can't squeeze up on Magoma uh, and that and we can become effective. But he he fits the bill in terms of um he can play in multiple positions, which is really important. Um, Johnny Jackson talks about personalities. Well, I think he ticks the box on that. I don't know how he class the personalities. If anyone's not looked at some of his interviews uh, for Bristol City, then you're missing a trick. Um, all I'll say is that he's a bit confused between doors and wheels. Um, but he, he does, for a personality, he sounds perfect um, for what we need. Cause you need some you need some characters in the, in the dressing room. But yeah, I think he fits multiple positions. I agree, right wing back, we we were um well, we we thought we might get me out get someone in there. And yeah, I agree with you. I think I still think we're a striker light. Although the good news is that Carl Hudlin returns south on Monday. Mm. With I assume still the same problem with Hudlin in terms of match fitness and we'll need a run of games to get himself up to speed again after the injury. But anyway, that's that's another issue. The point about so there's gonna be overlap here with this signing and what happened on Saturday against Barrow. The point you make there about a defender that can play the ball out, bring the ball out, perhaps what we're lacking, that seemed to be the biggest issue we faced on Saturday against Barrow. Barrow, who won one nil, took the lead in the very early on, and then pretty much just shut up shop and stopped us from, from creating anything. And we look like we want to bring it out from the back. But as you say, if Magoma is marked out of the game and we don't get our forwards linking up or dropping deep enough to link in with the centre-halves, or if the centre-halves aren't pushing high up of the pitch, high up enough of the pitch, then we really do struggle to break teams down. Yeah, and, you know, it's like anything, isn't it? Even last year on the Robbo, um, teams scout. They scout you, they, they look at ways of stopping you to play. Because we want to, we want to play football, that's, that's the thing. We want to have possession, we want to, you know, get McGovern in the hole and, and get him to dictate things. Um, always worrying when you're relying on one player. Because um, let's be fair, technically he's excellent. 
Um, but if you're going to scout us, you're going to look, well, you need to stop the ball getting into him. Um, and equally, you want to make sure you get the first goal because you get the first goal. It change, hey, hey, look, goals change games, but especially when you're a team that I think we're, we're, we're probably more suited to a counter-attacking, mm. um, even at home. Um, so, of course, Barrow get the early goal, which is, hey, look, it's a cheap, easy goal. It's a straightforward goal. It's a good move. It's a good move from them, but it's too easy. Um, yeah, and then we are a little bit where they back off. They've got no interest of of um, pressing us high anymore, and it just feels that we don't have that additional defender to maybe just come out with a ball. You know, you got three in there, you got three, you got three defenders. You want one to come out and then get your wing backs as high as possible. Um, of course, Saturday didn't help losing um, Jack Curry mm. at half time um, because I think we saw and no disrespect to to Paul Osley, but he's coming back, isn't he, from an injury? But we saw how much we missed in terms of attacking flair. With having no Jack Curry on that side, mm. I mean, does that show the limitations of the system as much as anything else? Where if we can't pay it out the back as we want to, or if we can't get Magoma to link things, and we'll talk more about that later because he's suspended for the trip to yes. Stockport. Um, we we have no real other options. I made a flippant comment on Twitter the other day, which people responded to saying they didn't think it was the case, but it made me think. I actually think it's more of a case than we realise. And I said that. In terms of us being a, a team challenging at the top end of the table, we don't really have the pace. And I think that's proven by the fact that back three lack pace and they have to drop so deep. Which then goes back to the problem you identified on the opening day of the season, which was that uh, the, the team was too far apart. Defence is too far apart yeah. from midfield and midfield is too far apart from strikers. And that all comes because the, the back three are dropping so deep, they're worried about getting caught in behind. Yeah, And then when we try and mix up, if we want to go a bit longer... Josh Davison is is not really a we we look at him as being a bigger and target man of the two strikers, but actually when you think of the target men we've had that have been successful over the years, when you think of a James Hansen, when you think of a Akin Fenwa or a Tom Elliott, back to goal, 25, 30 yards from goal, they can hold it up, they can bring others into play, they can win a lot in the air. But Josh doesn't really have that to that extent. And we've seen actually the last two home games how big a factor height has been when Doncaster have been able to bring on Giants, change the game, go direct. We're not the tallest at the back either. And then against Barrow, when they did force us long, I mean, their they're back four, their full backs were as tall as their centre halves, just getting no change out of them whatsoever. I mean, yeah, no, that's the limitations of the system, isn't it? We... Yeah, it is. I, I still think we we have. Yeah, you know, look, it's it's obvious that Johnny Jackson wants to play this this system, this tactic. And I, I look, John, what's no problem with that? Um, I don't think he's got the personnel that he needs to make it as effective. Um, but he's sticking to his guns. I, I don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, when when he come from Charlton, lots were saying like it was, you know, it was wasn't frightened to stick free up front. Um, whereas at the moment it feels it's like for like if we're doing substitutes. Um, but that could be limitations of the squad not necessarily that side of it. I still think we've got big problems. I think, you know, Magoma, sorry, I say big problems. They're not big problems, but they are issues. Um, I still think Magoma drops too deep, uh, which then means, as I've said before, that the midfield and, and the attacking lines are too are too far apart. Um, I agree with you, Josh Davison isn't a target man. Um, I think he works the channels very well. Um, I, that's where he wants the ball, really. And then he, you know, if he can get the right channel, he can get the right wing back in. Um I think him and uh, maybe Young Coombs are, are having a really great relationship. You can say you can tell that, but you've got to get service to them, you know, and, that, and that's the thing, isn't it? I think when you look at you know, obviously, look, Harry Pell coming in is an absolute real find because I think the biggest problem we have is is when we break the press. A lot of times you'll find it's five on four, um, like five being the, the number from the opposition. And if you break that press, you've got to break quickly. It's like in effect. Mm. We're quite fortunate where where we sit. Obviously, we sit high up, so you can see it very clearly. But it's like having two. It's like having two games. You have got a game in the final in our third, and if we break the press, there's another game. Mm. It's very much like the middle field is like you know, and that's the things. So if you break the press, you've then got to attack quickly. And there's a lot of times, and we saw it on Saturday, where we just aren't shifting that ball quick enough. Yeah. Um, and if you don't shift it quick enough, then they can regroup. Um, I, I, I look, do you know what? I, I understand the system. I like the system. I just think, you know, Harry Pell coming in will help. Um, Alex Woodyard coming in yeah. will help. Um, I think, obviously, the new, ki- the new kid we've got in, if he can play out of the ball and can step out, that's good. 
and we've got Carl Hudlin to come in. So I think, hey, look, we are a few players down. I don't think we quite know where to play uh, a Sal yet. It's a nice problem to have, though. I'd rather have that problem than not have it. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where we are. It's, it's the squad depth. It's the squad depth, and we, we've seen that already. Yeah. Um, squad depth challenged, ease a little bit, like you say, for the fact we did manage to get Harry Pell in uh, last week because, as we said, Paris is now suspended, certainly for yeah. the trip to Stockport. I mean, just for the moment, it's gone quiet on the red card, hasn't it? We've not really talked, no one seems to be talking about it since the since Saturday, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. Johnny Jackson sort of was asked about it and he said he'll have to learn from it, but didn't go into great detail about exactly what happened. What we think we understand happened is, as I think Paris had won the ball back in injury time as we're trying to get forward and get an equaliser. He was he was brought down just as the yeah. whistle went and he reacted and got a booking for his reaction and then appeared to then say something rude to the referee and that necessitated <laughs> a second yellow card. And there's been no arguments, there's been no issues, no one's complained about uh, it. It's just it's an experience thing. It's, it's frustration of a young player that, I mean, the thing with, with Paris is, is that he is technically, as we said, He's a level above, and that can be frustrating for a player if you're if you've got people that aren't on the same wavelength as you, and that can all boil up to added frustration if you're losing the game. Yeah, uh, we, I think we've got to be careful for making. Uh, I worry what I hear sometimes. I keep, you know, I hear people say that he's you know the best player we've had and stuff like that. It's six games in. I think he's technically very good, but it's his first loan, you know, oh, and he's yeah. learning. And that's the thing he's learning. And now he's going to be actually stopped from, from playing, which is a compliment to him. Mm. But we need to have other options around him. Um, I think, yeah, it, it was a second yellow. I don't even think you can I don't even think you can appeal against a second yellow or the yellow card from, from memory. So. If it's a straight red, if, if it's straight red, it might have helped us in, in a way. But um I think it was interesting what happened because it was the referee was around it, it was right at the end of the game. And I think I noticed that Alex Pierce tried to get in as quick as possible, but was late. He got the second yellow by then. And I think that's where you are. I think, you know, you want your senior pros to protect your youngsters. And I think it was just the way the game happened. We were pushing on. And if I'm being honest with you, he got left on his own with the referee. With the referee and the referee seems quite happy to... I don't want to moan about referees, but I do hate the fact that you can get... You've got more chance of getting sent off for, for giving abuse or reacting to something than you have of doing a foul. It just feels frustrated at the moment. Yeah. You know, the reaction sometimes is worse. It feels like if you... I mean, we've seen it with, with Chris Gunner, didn't we? The reaction to it. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it just it just annoys me a little bit, but um, hey, that's the way it is. But in a, in a weird way, I'm not actually that disappointed to see Magoma not playing today. Um, simply for the fact we need to have other options. We can't keep relying on this kid. Well, he yeah. can't play four. He can't play forty games a season. He can't. No. Be, you know, we moaned last year that we were playing Rudy and we were playing um, Asal. We couldn't rest them. Now we're resting Asal. We're moaning saying he can't get in the squad. Well, no, it's a squad. You know, I'm not. I'm not actually that bothered about him being rested because I don't want him to be literally. You know, get to January and he's struggling because he's had no rest. I think we were forgetting a little bit of last season. So we're going. We're not playing. Against Scott Stockport is not the worst thing in the world. What he does be interesting. Uh, he might change formation because have we got have we got a direct replacement for what Magoma and the role he does? I'm not too sure. No, um, we will look ahead to the Stockport game at the end and and talk more about that. And perhaps we we assume Harry Pell comes in and alongside George Marsh midfield. But we, we shall find out. the The last thing I want to talk about this week is going back to the point about squad and uh, Riley Towler coming in completing our business for the time being. We can still pick up some free transfers out of contract players at any point. Yeah. But, um, I don't know if that's on the cards or not. Um, clearly, we've we've brought players in. We've spent money. We've spent money on Josh Davison. We've spent money on Harry Pell. Uh, we've lost Luke McCormick. We've lost Jack Radoni. And um, obviously, Ollie Palmer we sold for a big fee. But I think, again, we spent money on Lee Brown at that time. So yeah. I'm not sure if we've I'm not sure if we've got any more money or anything around to invest in the squad anyway at this point. Uh, there was I saw Graham Stacy on the Don's Trust board. He was trying to answer some of these questions on on Facebook the other day. But I think for the time being, I think that's that's our lot, isn't it? We've we've had to 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 get in to to bolster the squad. We've had to ship out, and I suppose that's as always the case. Yeah, it's it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because, um, you know, you think about, yeah, I think Lee Brown, we did pay some money on, and, and that can be argued whether that was favour money. 
but we also um, dismissed Robbo, so they're in a payoff for that potentially. Yeah. We also brought in Mark Bowen uh, and Eddie Nisquesti. Yes. Yeah, true. Um, so that would have cost. Hey, look, do you know what? It, <clears throat> we, I think we could have spent some money on that. Yeah, it's very difficult, isn't it? Because I know we're as we, you know, we, as fans, we feel that we are different and we should know the ins and outs of finances. But equally, we don't be sharing that with um, other people because football is a small world and people want to do a deal and they don't <laughs> they can use anything to their advantage they will do um i think we also have to remember we got relegated i know that's difficult to forget but we were lost money you know there was different there was money from the central funding um so you do lose money within that um i've seen something um i saw it pretty pretty off well, it's not off topic but andy holt was talking about the the split in tv money this is the um, Chairman. Yeah, Chairman. And do you know what was really interesting? Because you know, I've always said to you about the the 80 12 8 split. Mm. Um, but he actually went into more detail. That's only for the first 60 million that comes in from right. central funding. After that, our share goes down to about 4% <laughs> from six, 60 to 100. And after that, so I never knew that. It's really interesting, isn't it? Because you just hear a top level figure. You don't, of course, yeah. you know, um, and it's more a case of how. Yeah, so central funding does in, is impact us and potentially the tenancy through the gate, which to be fair, holding up. Um, I think we personally, I would like some sort of summary, doesn't need the ins and outs of, a, of everything, do you know what I mean? But some sort of summary where we are, you know, what, what challenges we've we've hit, um, and roughly not because you don't want to know where all the money's gone because that's not, but have a little bit of an idea, you know, are we are we in, are we in a good position or not in a good position? And as we, you know, we spoke before we we started, you know, cost of living. Um, there's a big concerns. You know, businesses don't have a good rate. You know, I look at the floodlights. I look at the floodlights going on now. I'm like, can we afford to have the floodlights on? I know we can't play football in the dark unless you're at Confema, uh, when he's back in Hackney. Um, but, Liam you know, tried to look about... like he was playing in the dark most times. <laughs> you know, but thank goodness, thank thank goodness for these aluminous boots nowadays. Do you know what I mean? Because well, all we're going to be able to see it. Beatles, I mean, maybe that'd be a better game to watch, wouldn't it? Guess who's on the ball? Guess where the ball is? Yeah. Maybe the ball, maybe the ball needs a light. You know, like I you know for the 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 blind and the um, they have a ball that rattles, don't they? Maybe we need a ball that has lights on so we can go. help see, can see, see in the it. dark. Yeah. But there was I'd rather watch about. us play Stevenage that way than <laughs> actually have to watch Stevenage properly. <laughs> Do you know what could be interesting? The ball goes in the net, and all of a sudden the net lights up. Maybe that's a new, oh, that's, maybe God, that's a no, new development. That. That's what they'll do. That'll be what the Premier League does next <laughs> to make football more that, appealing. If, oh, that'd be great. It could flash blue and yellow. And maybe if you hit the post, it goes like, I don't know, the red. post illuminates to red. <laughs> the you Premier League going, will do this because somebody will go, <laughs> we need to do things to make sure that people are still interested in football because football's really struggled for interest throughout history, hasn't it? <laughs> Damn me. Anyway. <laughs> Um, oh, but no, it's true. I come up with. It's true, though. You are making quite financially. We do have to be wary of these things. We don't know what effect tendencies that might fall. I don't know. Season ticket sales, I guess, I mean, in theory, are money in the bank. So at least those have yep. stayed strong and we can rely on a certain percentage of income. What comes on top of that? But then again, I don't think things have kicked in quite as badly just yet. Leighton no. Orient seems to be on course for a big attendance, which yes. is encouraging for their first visit to Power Lane in quite a long time. So that's good. But I think you're right, when, especially when it comes down to deep winter time and things like that. I mean, you were always guaranteed, maybe you still will, maybe people will still save their money and go for the Boxing Day Christmas games to go and watch the football. Maybe they're not having Premier League this year for a month in November will potentially yeah. help the lower league clubs. You just don't know. It, there's no way of knowing. I mean, you're not, don't get me to predict anything, anyone, listeners, because, you know, pre-game on Saturday, I said we, I fancied a, a comfortable 4-0 victory. So, yeah, I know. So did I. Predictions are not you, my thing at the moment. Do you know what's interesting as well? We, we, in all seriousness, we're going to look at a World Cup in a country that like, look, shouldn't be having it. Shouldn't be happening. But it's going to be, it's going to be very hot. You're going to be you're going to see literally players sweating like their, their backsides off, and we're going to be sitting there with coats on and I'm, I'm, I'm able to put the heating on. Yeah. Mm. Sad times. Yeah. And the less we talk about Qatar, the better, I'd imagine, especially after this week. Uh, David Beckham, never mind. Oh, well. Unreal. Unreal. Anyway, um, I think that's it really for for this week. We should we uh should we move on to our new feature? Yes. So, Stu, three minutes on, has the transfer deadline day passed its sell by date? 
<laughs> oh crikey! But it, did, it didn't feel as um, it didn't feel as manic. Um, I was watching football this week because BT had all the well, they had literally from Tuesday through the Thursday had all the fixtures. So um, it didn't feel like it was. I don't know. Jim White didn't have his yellow tie out, did he? And stuff. Um, I didn't really watch much of that. But um, yeah, transfer deadline day is a bit. <laughs> it's a crazy window, isn't it? But um, there's a lot of money spent. Two billion in the Premier League. That's ridiculous. Mm, I just, I'm kind of glad that the furore over it has settled down a little bit. At the end of the day, if you go throughout history, how many transfers happen season in, season out? I mean, really, realistically, it's just, it, it, is it a little bit like deck chess on the Titanic in a certain, in a certain sense? Do you know what I mean? Nothing really, not a great deal is going to change because of it. The teams that expect to be at the top will be at the top. Teams that will be at, yeah. to be at the bottom will be at the bottom. It seems, yeah, a bit of a foray of nothing. Things change a lot now, isn't it? If you go back to the days of Man City when they brought Rubinho in on transfer deadline day and, and we were bringing the, the best players in, the English Premier League now has the best players. Um, you know, May United spent £80 million on someone and no one back an idea, did they really? Scary. Um, and that's the thing now, isn't it? So I think because you've got the best players in, in the English Premier League, um, it's not really a, a massive surprise, you know, it's just another star coming in. Um, on that. I think it's more, for us, I think it's more a case of waiting for the, the, the clubs to do their business and then the loan window becomes very much for us. You know, there's a lot of activity for clubs in our league um, on loans uh, because we're waiting for them. It's like, in a way, we're waiting for the January sales aren't we? or, the, or the September sales mm. and, taking what, and taking the players that these clubs don't want. If you look at our squad, we've got four low needs in. And I just remember, I mean, going back to I know football changes, things change, I understand this, but 20 years ago, teams in the fourth tier, they weren't, four, four of their squad aren't loans. They, they basically, there aren't any loans, really. You might get the very odd, rare one, but yeah. nothing like it is today. A lot of it is based on, really is, it's so important, I say important, but it plays such a big part, doesn't it, now, of all these squads. And I don't know whether it's a financial thing or what it is, but... I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's the best thing. You loan out within divisions now as well, like in the thing, mm. there's loans out within the championship. I tell you what I did see. Um, I was just keeping an eye on Robbo. I was watching what he was doing on under 23s, and I was nosy to see what the under 23s squad he had. And Chelsea have six goalkeepers out on loan. Oh, no, I don't six know. goalkeepers. Yeah. What do they do? That must be a great game. Have a five aside. Just try to keep with him. Like, I just, just just play five sides with it. I just wonder when it comes to Chelsea and their loans, like how much effort it must take. It must be like a, it must be like a job for, it must be like a call centre where the job, people are just it? tracking where all their players are. But as you say there, Stu, uh, to round off our three minutes, two billion pounds worth on players, on human beings going to play football in a different colour shirt seems somewhat absurd to me. Maybe it'll break one day, but it doesn't sound, it doesn't feel like it's going to be slowing down anytime soon. It's, cost of living crisis as you say doesn't seem to affect football at any point but never mind oh, yeah. and when will fans very quickly when will fans start questioning their teams you know fans want signings and want big signings when they're going to start realizing that football is a different world and there's money being spent that could be at uh, two billion quid let's be fair that's ridiculous money it is obscene really john fashnu was at plow lane on saturday was he do you want any anything you want to just quickly say about meeting John, meeting Fash? Uh, to say that I was to say that I was starstruck would be an understatement. I didn't realise how much I would have been, um, and also I'm so pleased we didn't do the interview live because I had to spend, well, just I had to spend just as long as the interview was editing it straight afterwards. Um, bless him. Um, yeah, so, yes, I, for, it was great. For the it, listeners that aren't aware, you interviewed him for the pre-show on YouTube, Nine yeah. News TV, and he swore a lot. He did, he did. Um, but you know what? It was great. It was, um, hey, look, he, there's a lot of people out there who got different opinions on John Fashnu. Um, he's a strange guy. Let's be fair, he's not all. I don't know if he's a full ticket, but as a footballer, he was one of my first heroes when I started watching Wimbledon. Um, and for me, I can only judge what he'd done on the pitch, and uh, that's where I am with that. But also, he was he was like a Pied Piper. He was followed everywhere he went. Mm. Like, he was so well received. And it just got me thinking, Nick, I was saying, I think I said to you, it's a shame that that's the first time we've had a real sort of Wimbledon hero come back. We should be doing that a lot more. Um, and it doesn't have to be someone like John Fashnir or Vinnie Jones or pray Robbie L one day will... I would love to meet Robbie L and interview him. Um, but, you know, even like Danny Bormans and... 
stuff like that. I don't know. I, I'd be nice for the club to maybe have um, some players come out on the pitch and 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 share that plough lane love um, mm. of it. You know, it doesn't have to be John Fashnu, but you know, we've seen many players come back. Dennis Wise is Johnny um, Danny Borman's in there quite a lot. Nice Stuart Castle do that. And I'm told Dean uh, Blackwell it. has been in attendance as well. Mm. I'm told. Yeah, Steve Cast, um, Stuart Costain was in the Phoenix on Tuesday night. There you go. Um, with his um, son, Leo Castledale, who was on the bench for the Chelsea Saturday night game. Um, he's getting big. He's mm. getting big. You, you never know. We might get a loan. Yeah, he might come back to us on loan one time. It would be nice to see some of our some of our development on Leo Castledale. Obviously, we lost him very young, but he looks like he's got a very good career in front of him. Mm, we did lose Leo Carlstein to Chelsea quite early, and um, and that's why we can't have the mum. Anyway, Jackson Five this week, Stu, is about John Fashno. I thought I'd tie it in with your chat with with John. So five questions about John Fashno. See how well we do this week. So question one: yeah. See if you can remember this revelation we had on Saturday. How old is John Fashno? Oh, fifty nine. Fifty nine. But he's still yeah. massive. He's still huge. I still wouldn't. I still wouldn't go to, into a dark room with him. No. Did we? Um, did we actually to see if he had lifts in his shoes? Because he was towering over everyone. Do you know what? At one point, when he was when he was swearing, he was talking about the, the tunnel and the stuff like that, and he was just flexing his hands. I was like, he's a monster. I would not want to be in a dark old cloud lane tunnel with him at all. No, when Matt Harwood insinuated that John was getting on a little bit, I thought, no, take your life into your own hands then, Matt. Like, look at those, you are saying, <laughs> and he's balling up his fists, I'm thinking, hmm, okay. Yeah, you yeah he's, doing very well for, he's doing very well for that age, isn't he? He doesn't look it. He does not look it, right. Uh, so you have one out of one, which is good. Question two, he joined Aston Villa. He left us for Aston Villa in 1994. Mm. What was the fee? How much did Villa pay for him? Oh, oh yeah. it was one point one point two million. It's close. I can't give you it, but it is very close. It's one point three five million. So I thought it was a little bit more, but one point three five million. I remember it was. I remember thinking at the time it wasn't a lot, and I and obviously the transfer fees back then weren't. But we were obviously getting big transfer fees, weren't we, for other players? But he was mm. old, even even was, back then. He was getting on a bit. Bless him. Uh, he won two England caps. I mean, good luck with this one. I wouldn't have a clue on this one. This is for the real listeners out there that the real sort of statisticians and knowledgeable people. He won two England caps. One was against Scotland. Yeah. What was the other? Which other country did he face while he's playing for England? Do you, know, do you know what? I've got a feeling it was something like Chile. Wow. Wow. I did not think you were going to get that one. Two. Well done. Yeah, Chile. I remember. I just remember because it was a. You know, I just remember thinking, what were the Chileans thinking of Fash? Well, yeah, well, you could imagine. <laughs> well, like, to be fair, they're probably worse than him. Who was that player that Chile had a little while, a few years after that? Was it Salas? Really good striker, mm. scored lots of goals. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Chile. Just in a random friendly, I think. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. Don't know. Um, right. Multiple choice this one. How many goals did he score for us? Was it. 98, 105, or 107? 107, I think. It was 107. Smashed it this week, Stu. It's three out of four. Never had a success rate like it. I know. This is this is my era. This is, this is your era. This is the era. <laughs> when you say that then, John Fashionu, well, finally, question five, he presented Gladiators with Ulrika Johnson. Yeah. In what year did Gladiators premiere? Oh, crikey. Um, I think it was before the millennium. Because I remember, and to be fair, I'm pretty not cheating, but I did obviously do some research on Fash um, before we come well, and joined us. Yes. I, did, I didn't do the year. Um, 99? Uh, so it was a long way before that. It was 1992. Was it really? He was, and you know what confused me? Because I was a kid and I was an idiot. I'll be like, how has he played mm. for Wimbledon? On the Saturday, and now he's gone straight to present Gladiate. Well, of course, it wasn't live, Nick. That's classic. That's. Could you imagine if it was? Well, we we saw what it was like when he's live. Well, um, yeah. you can imagine their up. You can imagine their outtakes, can't you? Yeah, Eureka Johnson. Let's be fair. Eureka Johnson was absolutely yeah stunning back then, wasn't she? Um, bless her. Before my time, Joe, I was born in '94. 
<laughs> Even though I just said that I was watching Gladiators in 92, just ignore that continuation <laughs> error, <laughs> continuity issues with the podcast. It's coming back as well, the Gladiators. Apparently so. They're bringing the big all... Battle. No on. one does anything new anymore. It's Gladiators, Big Brother. They're all bringing back the old things. Do you know what I saw, by the way, which was hilarious? Who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire now has a quiz to get on to who wants to be a millionaire. I've seen this. It's like the round That's they always hilarious. used to have. But it was like the round they always used to have. So whoever decided who got in the chair is now its own show. It's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Bizarre. You, do you reckon FIFA and UEFA have got involved in this? Because obviously they love, they love adding another round, don't they, to things? Um, well, or changing the rules or we could go on a whole big circuitous road we won't do but i've always said like <laughs> i saw like san marino's under 18s or something were celebrating a huge win over it might have been was it was it montenegro's under 18s or someone like that a young nation yeah. um and they were trumpeting it as a huge victory. And i was thinking this is what should be happening you should have pre-qualifying for the smaller nations and people think that's being elitist or whatever no when san marino are taking part in qualification for things surely they would benefit more it's like your zone of proximal development you want your lesser teams to be able to be in competitive matches against teams that are round about their skill level and that then helps them improve they're not improving from being smashed six sevens eights yeah and that's why we seed it's why we have competitions that are seeded it's why we have leagues exactly it'll be so we find our level exactly Everyone needs to find their level and be happy with that and then improve from there mm. anyway. Right, very quickly then, Stockport County on Saturday, which is today, still very confusing. This is very odd for us. Um, have not started life particularly well in League Two after being promoted last year from the conference as champions. I looked at this, Stu. They won the league by six points from Wrexham. Sucks to be Wrexham. They only drew four games all season, which is, uh, for, for example... Um, Solly Hole Moors, for example, they finished in third. They lost seven games. So Stockport lost 10, I think. So Solly Hole lost fewer games than the champions, but it was the draws, 12 draws, three times as many draws. Anyway, it shows the importance sometimes how points cannot potentially win prizes. Um, anyway, so in League Two so far, Stockport sit 19th in the early table, one win and four defeats from their six games so far. Interestingly, they've picked up three red cards in six games. And uh, Paddy Madden was one of those last week, and he will miss the game at Edgeley Park. So it cancels out us losing Paris Magoma. David Chaloner is their manager since November last season when he got promoted with them, uh, having previously got promotion from the conference with Hartlepool or the National League, whatever you want to call it. David Chaloner, long throw man, right? From Chaloner days, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Anthony Sarsovic is their forward who's got three goals so far. Chris Hussey joined them on transfer deadline day, yeah, which is an interesting one because if you're looking at someone that could potentially play left wing back or right wing back, I'm just throwing that one out there. <laughs> um, yeah, they also signed a young striker from the League of Ireland, which I thought was interesting 19 year old Daniel Okute. I just noticed it was from Kerry in the League of Ireland. I thought, hmm. Different, yeah, lots of, lots of players out there, aren't they? That some take a chance on, um, you know, look at what we done. We we took a chance on Adam Rushfield, didn't we, from Wales? Um, no, bless him. So, yeah, some you take chances, don't you? You sometimes take a hit on them, don't you? Uh, and so yeah, there we are. I have a feeling, Stu, that Stockport, I can't see them losing five, I cannot see them losing five of their first seven. I just don't see that happening. So, this has got draw written all over it for me. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'd go for a draw. I think it's interesting with Stockport, isn't it? Because I think a lot of people were saying that they were going to do really well in this league. Um, but they overspent in the conference to get out of the conference, which, let's be fair, is a tough league to get out of. Um, but I don't necessarily look at their squad and, and worry massively. They've also got a lot of expectation. Uh, I think they've sold a lot of season tickets up at Stockport. Um, so that probably might be getting on, on top of them, you know. Um so I'm not overly I'm not overly surprised to see them not romping away the league. I think the league's a lot stronger than what we think sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I think a draw. I think a draw. It does probably help out having Paddy Madden out. Um, but let's not forget we we sometimes see these teams who spend lots of money, put loads of salaries, loads of high salaries, and the players don't necessarily perform. Probably because they're being paid more than what their value is and. Hey, look, they're having an easy life, aren't they? You know, look at Salford. Um, Salford have changed their model this time. 
gone for more younger players rather than top heavy salaries and they're doing better mm. it's not always about tracking money at things it um, isn't it's it's very there are other things that come as well but what's interesting about Salford is something like 2000 attendance on Saturday for them and like Harrogate are doing it. Harrogate might struggle this year, but seventeen hundred, I think they got. It's just, and then you've got Bradford with fifteen thousand. We're up there, most best attended with up to near eight thousand. Swindon get big attendances. It's real sort of gap. There's, there's there gaps. The there's gaps. Yeah, there are gaps attendances wise. I know. Look, we've only just started recently getting bigger crowds. Um, obviously, with a bigger stadium, uh, naturally. But yeah. Um, I tell you what I think, but I know I'm sort of going off by Lane Orient. That's going to be a great game, by the way. Mm. Um, I was I was doing some graphics for obviously for our show, and even having the Lane Orient badge, I was like, oh, this is like a proper London derby. Yeah, big club, big club in this league, big mm. club in this league, and um, started. And well. we, we 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 went there a couple of years ago, didn't we? And it was um it was a great day out at Lane Orient. I'm looking forward to them coming down. Yeah, um, to play Lane. But you're right. There's some big clubs. Bradford City difficult. They don't. The problem with Bradford City is they don't, they they get fifteen thousand in. They don't even own the stadium. No, they pay rent on it. How many clubs are doing that? Big club, but I think big club in terms of when you look at their fans, but revenue big big revenue not necessarily the, the case. Not so much. See, Cambridge United apparently have um, purchased their ground back this week. I see that. Do, do you know what? Hey, look, you know you've got Derby in in League One because of. Selling their ground, Jeff Wednesday the same. Yeah, I just I wish there was something in there that just said grounds stay with clubs. They should never be separated. Mm-hmm. Um, in my opinion, um, yeah. on that side of it, but of course they do to get around the financial fair play, which Leicester City are struggling with. Poor, poor Brendan Rogers. Mm. <laughs> He's yeah. the, is he going the next one to be sacked for moaning about funds? I imagine so. Scott Parker yeah, was the first Premier League manager sacked this week, but we've already had Rochdale Pie Company with their manager. Um, who was the other one? There was another one. Um, Stoke. It was, Stoke. wasn't it? Michael O'Neill, obviously, because then Alex Neal left Sunderland to go and join them. So, yeah. <laughs> I did laugh. I did laugh. Alex Neal went and left to a bigger club. But then Sunderland apparently had him on a 12-month rolling contract. Well, that's their own fault. Exactly. But, you know, you just think the Sunderland big club, Stoke, massively funded club. Let's be fair, they're owned by a betting institution. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they lost to Alex Neal because they put him on a 12-month rolling contract. No loyalty, and I don't blame him leaving either because 12 month running contract is just ridiculous. Isn't it? Well, sort of always that issue, isn't it? Where he can say, Put me on that contract, <laughs> I'll show you what I can do. Got him promoted. And let's be fair, when he took them over, we were at his first game and they were oh, they were well off that, it. That, that, that was shocking. Um, but let's be fair, 12, I'm, I'm talking about 12 month running contract. We can't get a manager for the whole season. So what are we still talking about? Well, yeah, we're on. Well, yeah, yeah. Johnny Jackson, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people with glass houses. I was, I was doing against you last in the season with our history. <laughs> um, anyway, right. Uh, quick, yeah, we said it would be a draw. Um, so yeah. we'll expect a draw at Stockport uh, later today. Updates will be on Twitter at Nine Miles Podcast. If you're listening to this before kickoff, which you might well do, you might be watching it on iFollow from your uh, residences abroad and um, just listening to this in the build up. Anyway, uh, we probably need to call it a day there. Um, yeah, that's it, I think, time, time-wise. time So, Stu, thank you very much for joining me on this Saturday morning. No, no problem at all. And uh, thank you very much for listening. We will be back next week. And as Stu says, we'll be previewing a big London derby next week as Leighton Orient come down to Plough Lane. So we're very much looking forward to that. I've still got the scars on my wrist, Stu, from when <laughs> we played Leighton Orient. Like you referenced there a few years ago in League 2, we had, I think they went down that year. Or we went up and they went down in the end um yeah their toilet door got jammed and i had to bash my way out and cut my cut my wrist and it was i don't know if you remember that and i've still got the scar there i still look at it and go oh, yeah that was late in orient because the door was yeah anyway, there you go. you've got your scars in your battles um to be fair now i've got gender neutral toilets now so you'll be all right let's not pull at that thread right now <laughs> don't get to me started <laughs> right thank you everybody for listening alexa bliss bag first milk last two plus two equals four and we shall speak to you again next week